Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to UndergroundWellness.com. Again, we're on the same topic, Gut and Psychology Syndrome by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, as well as her lecture on this amazing DVD, Why Traditions London 2011. Both of these are available at UndergroundWellness.com. I owed you this video yesterday, but I didn't get around to doing it because I've made this deal with myself. I said, you know what? When I'm doing a radio show, I'm not doing a video because if I try to do both, my head is going to explode. And by the way, yesterday's show with Devil in the Milk author Keith Woodford was an absolute instant classic. Go to blogtalkradio.com slash underground wellness and listen to it. It was bomb. Before I get started, I got to say this. I am not your doctor. I'm not telling anybody to go off of their asthma medications or anything like that. This is just information. You know what? I can be completely, completely wrong on this stuff. I want you guys to take this and let it spark your brain a little bit and go, wow, you know, I want to look deeper into this. So do your own research. Do not take my word for it. So we're talking about the gut and its connection with asthma. So last time we spoke, we talked about these enterocytes, right? These enterocytes are the cells that line the intestinal barrier. And in between these enterocytes, there's like this glue that sticks them together so bad stuff doesn't slip between them. However, when you've got bad gut flora, too much bad bacteria in the gut, which is very, very common, that, that bacteria makes chemicals that kind of dissolve that glue, they eat away at that glue, and now there's spaces in between the enterocytes and things start to flow through. Now what kind of things flow through? Undigested food particles, toxins come through microbes come through and now you've got problems because things that are getting in aren't supposed to be there. But the question is, where do they go? And so Dr. Campbell McBride presented some really cool stuff with the, where the water soluble toxins go and where the fat soluble toxins go and some of the stuff I didn't even know about. So let's go ahead and follow the water soluble toxins first. It's the nutrients as well that, as well that do this too. Now these things, water soluble, are going to go through something called the portal vein. And that's going to take them over to the liver. The liver is like your primary organ of detoxification. It's where it's at. It does all the filtering and the detoxifying of these different things. But the problem is our livers weren't designed for 2011. You know, our livers weren't designed for the hundreds of thousands of chemicals in our air, in our food additives and chemicals. It, was, it, it wasn't prepared for all the, the nasty stuff that's in our personal care products. So the liver is overwhelmed. It's doing a job that it wasn't really designed for. And so what we get here is overload, toxic overload. Not just from the things I just mentioned, but also just from, you know, metabolism. That's, that makes its own toxins as well. But this becomes a huge problem when things start to slip through that intestinal barrier because you've got bad gut flora. So the liver is overwhelmed. It's overloaded. And you get spillover. So the blood in the liver collects and it puts it through something called the IVC, the inferior vena cava. And that's going to take it to the heart, the right side of the heart, and it's going to take those toxins, those water-soluble toxins, to the lungs to be gotten rid of by way of coughing them up or by way of getting them out as gases. Now, fat-soluble vitamins. We'll come back to that in a second. Or fat-soluble nutrients and toxins. The fat-soluble toxins don't go here. They go through the lymph. And that's going to take them through the thoracic duct, boom, into the lungs to meet up with those water soluble toxins. You'll see there's different structures in the lungs. You've got your primary bronchi, your secondary, your tertiary. You've got your bronchioles as well. You've got your alveoli. You may have learned about those in, in biology class. And those are going to get rid of these toxins by way of something called phagocytes and also by something called the mucociliary escalator. And what that means is that within your lungs you have these cells that are kind of like your enterocytes. And they have the little Don King hairs on them that point upward. And so the toxins come in and you get this kind of sweeping of the toxins up through the lungs into the trachea so you can go ahead and cough them out. Okay? That's how it's supposed to work. But what happens when you get a huge accumulation or an elevated accumulation of toxins in the bronchi? Well, what happens here is you get all this damage. The toxins cause damage to these areas in the lungs, and the body goes, whoa. You got to realize your body is very smart. Your body is like Yoda. It's extremely wise. And the body goes, hey, we have to do something about this. We have to heal this somehow. And what, what do the lungs do? 
And they say, okay, there's a bunch of damage right here. Let's go ahead and shut this baby down for a minute. And let's go ahead and heal this baby up. Now, when a part of your lung shuts down, when that bronchi, when bronchi shuts down, you got a problem, okay? The bronchus is shut down and you might feel a little uncomfortable. You may wheeze. You get something called a bronchospasm, which is going to make you wheeze. Now, what do we do? We use some type of inhaler, some anti-asthma medication to open that thing back up. But when you open it back up by way of your inhaler, you're not giving the lung the time it needs to heal. Now, I know you're asking the question, well, how long does this take? Because this is incredibly uncomfortable, Sean. Five to 15 minutes. Your body is saying, yo, sit down, chill out for a minute. Have a, a glass of something warm. Kick it. Let me finish up this job. Let me heal up this lung. And then go and do whatever you got to do. <sighs> That's what we do. Now, when we use the medications over and over and over again, again, we're not allowing this to heal. And the damage gets worse and worse and worse and worse. That's why the use of asthma medications over time leads to long-term lung damage. Okay? Again not allowing it to heal. And so what do you do? I can't tell you what to do as far as your medication, but we need to start thinking about what's going on. Where is this toxic low coming from? What is the root cause of these chemicals, you know, uh, building up or accumulating in your lungs and causing damage and making things shut down? Get to the root cause. Is there anything else I gotta say today? I think that's pretty much it. You guys need to, seriously. I can't say this seriously enough. This ain't a sales pitch. You don't have to buy it from me at all. Get this DVD. If any of this stuff resonates with you, turn this on. I've only watched Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride's uh, lecture. There's like six or seven other lectures for DVD. So go out and get this. Google it. Go to my website in the store. Get it. Whatever. Just get the information. Uh, let's see. We're supposed to be talking about the foods, the fermented foods, cultured foods, real foods. We'll talk about that on Monday. Then we'll get into a little fat loss and leptin stuff next week as well. Then I'm off for Thanksgiving. Darksidepreview.com. Go there. Get the free download of the first chapter of my book, The Dark Side of Fat Loss, Lessons from the Underground. Or go to darksideoffatloss.com and get the whole thing along with the Underground Wellness Cookbook. Uh, there's a bonus as well, an optional um, Underground Workout Manual. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. And I'm out of here, guys. Peace.